Okay, we're going to take this graph right here, and it says for the function f whose graph is given, graph the antiderivative. Now the antiderivative is known as capital F. That satisfies the initial condition that capital F of zero equals zero. So this is what we consider a derivative function right here, and we're trying to draw the function whose derivative is this graph. I'm going to scoot this up a little bit so I can see the whole thing here. Let's label our axes properly. Now I do know that it was given to me that f of zero was zero. So that's the first thing I'm going to plot right here. f of zero is zero. Now up until two right here, I can see that my derivative is flat, is constant at two. So a function whose derivative has a constant two, that is a linear function with a slope of two. Now this is a positive two, so my line here has got to be a positive two slope. So if that's two, that's two, that's four. So positive two slope, I have to go up two and over one, up two and over one. So that's a line of slope two, positive two, which will mean that the derivative will look like this. It will also go the same direction down here, the exact same slope. Okay, now this is a graph of a linear function whose slope is changing. So now I also notice I have a corner right here. That's okay, I mean the, the graph of the derivative is continuous, so there's nothing that's undefined here. It doesn't say that capital F has to be continuous, except that if this is continuous, that's continuous. It's obviously differentiable, so this has to be continuous. So it looks like my graph is going to be increasing up until four because my derivative is positive and my graph will be decreasing after four. Now this is a linear function. If you think about what kind of functions has a derivative that's linear, it's going to be some sort of quadratic function. So from here, I know that I have to increase up until four in a parabolic way and then I have to decrease after four in a parabolic way. Now we actually can calculate exact values based on this area right here. Okay, I know this area here, if I calculated the area, that's going to be two times two, which is four. And that area right there is going to be half of that because it's a triangle. This area here is going to be the same size as this, but negative. So if I want to know exactly where these values are, let's say I want to know capital F of four. So capital F of four is going to be evaluated by integrating from zero to four, little f of x dx, which we know by the fundamental theorem, that's capital F of four minus capital F of zero. Of these three things right here, I do know one of them that's f of zero, and I actually know this one, the area under the curve of f of x dx between the x-axis and the curve from zero to four. So from zero to four, that area is four plus two, which is six. So six equals f of four minus zero. So that means that f of four is supposed to be six. So this guy right here, to come across and be six, which I did a pretty good job there by eyeballing it. But that is a way to find particular values of your antiderivative using the fundamental theorem of calculus and just space and area, what we understand the definite integral to be.